There's been a growth of interest in the role physical movement plays in early childhood development. Studies that look at the links between physical development and intellectual and social development. This programme features three educational research projects that are exploring various aspects of movement that can benefit children, particularly those with special educational needs. Sue Soan is a principal lecturer at Canterbury Christchurch University. Her research aims to raise teachers' awareness of the link between posture and the development of motor skills by producing a resource that can be used in the classroom. Everybody sit down on the floor. Posture is really important when we're thinking about long-term health of young people firstly. But it's also really important for teachers to think about posture when we're thinking of learning, and especially for young children when they're actually establishing good practices for sitting and for standing, because it's so important for developing reading, writing and other skills in the classroom. Children can actually learn and listen and take information in when they're standing, when they're lying on their stomachs, and it can be important that they can move around. I got together with an occupational therapist from the local primary care trust, Marion Narak. Currently, the research is really at a trial basis, and we really wanted feedback from teachers before we actually did a final resource. One child actually needed a footrest. We realised very class, early on that we needed to make it simple, school, accessible and very user-friendly. Excellent, so they are noticing that yes. the stability helps the children. And they found I think that, once a, a teacher really understands about child development and motor skill development, they can make these changes without six, having to do something special. Six, so the things that are included in the pack are just everyday adjustments that will help a child to learn at school. Our document is divided into two sections. On the left-hand side of the page, the information is really about the importance of different types of posture. And then on the right-hand side of the page, we gave an activity that teachers could give to the children in the classroom. Underneath the activity, there would be a website link and also some research. Sit it up straight, Jamie. That's it, because that fills our lungs with lots of air, which means that our brains get lots of oxygen, which means we can concentrate really carefully on what we've got to do next. Very often, having to sit still for any prolonged period of time means that the child's attention drops. I think a lot of us would find it very hard to attend during a staff meeting if someone told us to sit absolutely still. So I encourage teachers to teach what I call social sitting, so that you can sit in a variety of positions on the floor. As long as you don't disturb your neighbour, you can okay. move. And are you going to cross your legs today, or are you going to stretch them out? As an NQT, it is He's very tempting to have everything bell. as you and think it should be, very ordered and sitting in straight lines, cross-legged, because you feel like you are then in control. Tegan, would you like to lie on your tummy? But it is lovely to have this folder to say, no, you don't need to do that to be in control. They do need to be able to get up and move around. They are able to sit with their legs out or lying on their tummy. Me. Are you comfy? I think you schools can help children really by understanding a little bit about motor development, by making reasonable adjustments so that all children can put their feet on the floor in any classroom. This can be done with wooden blocks or just a couple of telephone directories is enough to stabilise a child so that their attention is on the handwriting task, not on their stability. Any comments you can give us on this resource? Yeah positive or negative, would be really, really supportive yeah, no, that's and helpful. Fine. I've got lots of notes in here. <laughs> we okay, are we trained to teach. We're not trained yeah, to know all about the physiological aspects of the body, how sitting affects the children, how it could affect long-term posture issues in terms of back pain and things like that. And what the project has done has enabled us to have a greater awareness and understanding of those needs, so which has meant the teachers yeah, on a daily yeah, basis yeah, in the classroom yes, have felt yeah, a lot more so. empowered. And it's very helpful to have those symbols so that they can obviously Visually access it as well. Yeah. We're focusing this research on good practice for all children and for all teachers. 
But it is really important also for those children with special educational needs because it's a t if a teacher is far more generally aware of good posture, then obviously that enables them to identify those children that might be needing extra support. You mentioned about the song. Yeah, we didn't actually use these symbols very much before. Uh, it's helped me to identify some children who may have previously been um, regarded as perhaps just fidgeters, but actually the reasons behind why they are fidgeting or not concentrating are obviously a lot deeper and underlying, so it helped me to put some resources into play. I think the days of research just taking place in universities is very much back in the dark ages, really, and that we are very much encouraging all professionals to take part in research and to collect information and data, and we feel that this is really important. Handwriting can be a challenge for many children and is often even more of a struggle for children with special educational needs. Jane Medwell, Associate Professor at the University of Warwick and a team of researchers, are exploring the way handwriting affects children's ability to compose written work. Fundamentally, our research is about writing. We are really keen for children to write well, to compose well. And handwriting is a small part of that. But it's really surprising how much handwriting accounts for the outcomes of composition. Because if you're not automatic in your handwriting and you're giving the actual generation of letters your attention, then you don't compose as well. We've got quite good international and national evidence that children whose handwriting is not automatic don't do as well in their writing sat, for instance. Lots of children with special needs have problems in this area. We also know that lots of children who don't have identified special needs have problems in this area, and we know that this particularly affects little boys. What about the next sound? Play. Aye. Yes. It's... Just like in my eye. Yes, what we're doing like is we're working one. with some of our partnership schools to develop a handwriting booster for children whose handwriting isn't very automatic. Basically, we are looking for a way of practicing handwriting that ensures the children keep generating the mental and physical codes to write the letters because the more they do it, then the more automatic they get at it. Instead of presenting children with something to copy, which they copy repeatedly, like a whole line of the same letter, we are presenting them with things like improbable combinations of letters. So an O, then a P, then an A. Okay. So that each time they encounter a letter, they have to generate the mental and physical codes to write that letter again because the more times they do that, the more automatic they will get. For this study, we will have some numerical evidence in terms of the results of automaticity tests, speed tests, neatness tests and composition tests done before and after the programme. But there's more to it than that. We've also got a sort of feedback loop happening while we're doing the research. So the students and TAs are talking to each other about what engages the children most. We're getting feedback from parents about which activities they enjoy doing and how long they will stick at them. Now, a, oh, does that look right? Let's have a check. One of the aims of this research is to do something that requires fairly low levels of subject knowledge. And that makes it quite different from lots of other interventions in literacy, and that's really important. We want something that can be used easily in lots of different schools. And so we're putting our programme onto a website so that people can literally take it off and try it out in their school. Lessons in movement are important for the development of all children, giving them an opportunity to learn how to use their bodies and understand the way they work. Lindsay, stay where you are. Everyone benefits, but classes can be particularly useful for children with special needs. Melanie Peter, senior lecturer in education and early childhood at Anglia Ruskin University, is leading a research project 
that aims to develop movement education in early primary teacher training. But I would like everyone to go to the middle and I would like people to be gentle. Now let me see those wiggly fingers. There are many pressures on schools. Timetables are very tight, huge amount to cover within the curriculum. Movement can be one of the first things to slip away. My concern is how can we get this embedded back into schools? What this research is aiming to do is to find the best way to train teachers to use movement in their practice to meet the full range of abilities in schools. Oh, sit up straight like your stiff peg dolls. With a research partner, Dr Ofra Walter, we devised a training package, an intensive series of four sessions, both for teachers in training and maybe with experienced teachers looking to top up their professional development. One of my students, Julie Glasscock, is currently on her second year school experience. Particularly I found that children with special educational needs, the movement really enforces their practical learning. And your knees, try and your... I've actually been really pleasantly surprised by some of these children that don't normally shine, that are not academic maybe, but have shone so massively in the movement sessions and have come up with some very interesting, intricate moves that they are then able to show the rest of the class. And maybe for the first time, they've been the one that's at the top of the class, and they've really enjoyed that. It's made their confidence grow, uh, how they're interacting with people and how they feel about themselves. Well done. Obviously, any form of physical activity is very important in the primary curriculum, and we only have to look at obesity rates, the lack of play spaces for children, the safety issues of letting children out to play. So the more actual physical activity we can get into the taught curriculum, the better. And I think movement holds a special place here because it's quite different from some of the, the games, um, activities that we do do. It's very controlled. It helps children aware of their body awareness, body space. I think we'll flop down like rag dolls onto the floor. Plans for getting the work out there include a training DVD, which we hope will be suitable for higher education institutions that are involved in training teachers, but also might be used by trainers of serving teachers. Nobody's being swung on the end. Written guidance will be needed so that people can use this resource potentially quite flexibly with people at different stages of their professional development as movement teachers. Great to see, you know, Q10 here, how you're differentiating your teaching, modifying challenges. Mm -hmm. The assessment today as well, it was great to see mm -hmm. you using the TA, the yes. teaching assistant, mm -hmm. to... Um, to be tracking yes, some specific children, children that I'd ask mm. her to. Children that do have behavioural issues. Exactly. It allows them to um, run off a bit of energy and then their concentration following these sessions can actually be greatly improved when they are going back to more academic work. Um, I really liked um, at the end of the lesson mm. um, when you tapped the children ready to go back into the classroom and you whispered to them a positive comment mm. yeah. and each comment was individual. Harry, you're tucking and rolling over, it's brilliant. Movement is really important, but I do think it has been sidelined, and that's a great shame, and I think it should actually be back in there as a, a fundamental part of the curriculum because it's got such great benefits for different types of learners. <laughs>